Patrick Dory has invented a machine that creates a beach blanket of advertising right in the sand. Wherever we look today, we see the market reaching into every last corner of our daily lives. On this one half mile stretch are approximately 5,000 impressions of Skippy peanut butter jars. Everything's about private property and everything's for sale. Everything from the band shell. That will be $125,000. To the lecture hall. $150,000. Can be named for a price at New Berlin School. It's a phenomenon that's reaching some new and even ridiculous extremes. Even a town selling its own name to an internet company for $75,000. Welcome to Half.com Oregon. One frontier after another reduced to private property. This marks the beginning of the commercial development of the moon, and we suspect we know where it will end as well. And while it's easy to regard these stories as isolated outrages, they're all symptoms of a deeper, more alarming mentality. This is the United States of America. It is a highly competitive economy. You claw your way up on the backs of others. That's the way it's done. Didn't you know that? And over time, we seem to have forgotten a crucial part of our history the part of the American story that has more to do with our shared interests than with corporate concerns about the bottom line. We become so spoiled by ready access to good food, quality health care, quality homes, new cars, terrific colleges, that we think of them now as things every American is entitled to. But they're not entitlements. They are quality products which are a direct byproduct of our free market. I'm David Bollier, and I've been studying the commons for quite some time. And I've discovered that it has a lot to say about the audacious scams of market capitalism. Global markets have been devouring our commons, our shared wealth, for centuries. But fortunately, a movement of people around the world is stepping up to name and reclaim the commons. It's a movement whose time has come.